What is going on, everybody? Jenobin94 here. Welcome back to the Twin Brit here on Ben Builds. I'm so happy you can join us. We're back on the Bow Fighter. This should be the very last episode and final reveal for this amazing model. I've been having so much fun building this, and this is the last episode, so we're going to get a chance to see how this thing ends up. We're going to go ahead and start on the decals for the very first step here on this episode. Now, last time, we went ahead and overcoated the entire kit in Future. That is dry. It is cured. We're ready for the decaling process. I took a little bit of time off camera, cut out all the decals we need. They're right here on the cutting mat. I think we are ready to go. Hopefully, these go on well enough. I'm going to grab my highlighter, of course, and do the normal procedure. I've got my water here straight out of the tap. Nothing fancy. Microsol, microset, always a must. We have our brush here. I'm probably going to use this for the microset. I've got one off the side for the microsol. And, of course, our reverse action tweezers. Gotta love these things, you know? So, we're all ready to go. Let's go ahead, pull out our highlighter, so we can go ahead and keep track of what decals we've already put on. And we're going to go ahead and jump in and get started. So I have one rondel right here. We're going to start on the top wing. There's not a lot of decals here, but there are enough to go ahead and give us some interest. So we're going to start off with the rondel here on the very top of the wing and move forward and get everything finished. Let's do it, guys. All right, guys, decals are done. I'm going to go ahead and let these cure. We're going to make a cut here. I'll let these cure for about 24 hours. We'll be back. I'll hit these with some future, and then we'll be ready to carry on. And we're going to move on to the next little area, which is kind of the fiddly bits we haven't put on yet. So bear with me. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, guys. It's been about a day, and the future has cured. The decals are cured. Everything is ready to go. We're going to start off here on the fiddly parts. We're going to move to the rear machine gun position. Now I have some Model Masters gun metal. We're going to use that just for the rear machine gun. The instructions do call out for a gun metal color, and this is all I have. It's oil-based. I don't really use oil-based paints too much except for washes, things like that. But you know what? It's all I have, so we're going to roll with it. It's fine. A little blue for my liking, but it's not too bad. Once this is dry, we'll come back. We'll do a quick dry brushing, but all that's pretty standard stuff, guys. Then we'll be mounting it into the back area, and then we'll put that back canopy on as well. So let's carry on. So one thing I wanted to go ahead and do here, I've overcoated the decals in the future. That's all cured. I want to go ahead and kind of fade the decal just a little bit. So I have some blue mixed with sea blue here in my paint cup, and we are just doing a real quick kind of overall fade of the blue area. I'll also come back. Mix up a little bit of red and do the same thing for the middle of the rondels just to kind of give it that slightly weathered effect. I don't know if this is going to work. I've never really tried this before, but we're going to give it a shot. We're also going to make up a sludge wash, guys. I love the sludge wash, so I'm scraping off a little bit of this pastel. We're going to mix this with some of our weathering powders. Of course, my 
tried and true aim weathering powder we're going with the grimy black this time and i'm going to take a nice heaping helping of this and dump it right into my paint mix now we'll add a little bit of water there we are probably going to need a little bit more water but that's okay it's a standard procedure nothing really that fancy just a couple of drops of dishwashing liquid into that will break surface tension and we should be ready to go there we are Mix it up with my toothpick a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more dishwashing liquid just to make sure this is nice and even, very smooth. There we are. Just a couple more drops. Perfect. Now mix it on up. We should be ready to go ahead and start applying this sucker all over the model. This part always makes me nervous, guys. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, give this a nice little sludge wash. We're going to work in the direction of the airflow. We're going to get everything coated down with a sludge wash, and we're going to see how this looks. Here we go, keep your fingers crossed. give you a close up here of the results of our sludge wash as you can see the panel lines are nicely highlighted it really makes everything kind of pop and I love the fact that it still allows my weathering to show through that I did before like the pre-shade the post shade and the marbling effect we're gonna move on to my colored pencil chipping method and again I'm just going to take this nice gray colored pencil and we're gonna chip little areas here and there giving it a bit more of a used look I also have a couple other colored pencils that I can use for the rondels and for a few other areas so Let's get this going, chip it up. All right, we are good with the chipping right now. Let's move on to some oils. Now I'd like to make a little bit of um, some oil stains and kind of streak some oil in the direction of the airflow. So we're going to take our mixing pan here and we're gonna take some burnt umber. I'm gonna take a little bit of that and just go ahead and put it right in this paint tray. That should be sufficient. I can always add more really, so that should be good enough. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some of my thinner here. This is just regular old testers, model masters thinner. I'm going to mix that up and I'm going to get this into a nice, very thin consistency. Then I'm going to start applying it in different areas on the model, kind of streak it around and kind of blend it together. Nothing too fancy, pretty standard practice. So let's go ahead and give it a try. This is the finished product here, guys. I like how this looks. Again, subtle, very subtle shifts in color. Um, I did streak a little bit, probably more on the bottom of the aircraft. Let me flip it over so you can see that. Oh, hatch came open. That's okay. We did a little bit more streaking here on the bottom. So I like that. I think it looks cool. I'm really kind of excited to see how this all ends up turning out. We're on the good foot here, guys. I think this is looking great. I also wanted to use a little bit of the weathering powder for gun dust because, of course, these have the machine guns in the wings, and we would have had gun dust coming up and over the wing and around the bottom of the wing. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of streak that a little bit of the AIM grimy black, and I think that should be sufficient. I'm not gonna go overboard on this, but I'll put enough to kind of give it an impression. Then of course we have to blend it. So I'm gonna use my Q-tip and I'm just gonna kind of blend it in, kind of give it a nice, you know, subtle shift 
So next, guys, we have to go ahead and start installing the last little bits and pieces before we have the final reveal. So we got to put those rockets on. I'm going to glue one by one. The other side is already done, so I don't have to worry about that. I initially thought maybe putting a little bit of fuse wire in the back of these, but that's just too small. <laughs> I don't really feel like doing that. Rockets are on guys, we're looking great there. Now it's time for a quick flat coat. So I'm gonna use this, this is Gunzi, Mr. Hobby flat coat. We're gonna go ahead and use that, spray it over the whole model, nice and easy spray. Then we'll come back and we'll hit the landing lights and we'll get a few odds and ends there. They're supposed to be clear. We don't want them fogged up with the flat coat. We're now installing the last bits and pieces here on the bow fighter before the final reveal guys i've got the nice little bubble here over the top of the antennas i got to do the wing lights as well so we're going to do that off camera real simple job a little bit of super glue pop those lights on hit them with a the clear red and a clear green so i'll do that off camera we'll be back and i'll show you the final reveal all right everybody we are done nine episodes the bow fighter is finished here she is in all of her bowfighter glory. We are finished, guys. This has been such a fun build. I have to tell you, I have enjoyed almost every moment of this build. It is such a cool plane. I'm surprised I've never built one of these before. We put a little bit of an aerial on here as well, just to let you know. So let's go ahead and run you through what we've done. Quick close up, you'll see I did a little bit of chipping with the colored pencils. I do like to use that technique. We did some weathering, some streaking, some oil staining. We went ahead and did the sludge wash. That I think really helps to make everything pop. I think next time I might try an oil wash instead of the sludge wash to see how that works. But I really like this whole kind of process that I've somewhat developed here that works for me. Did a little bit of chipping on the rondels. It might be a bit heavy, but you know what? Hey, live and learn. I think it's decent enough. Everything turned out just as I wanted it to. We did more oil streaking on the bottom. I think that would get dirtier just because it'd be closer to the ground when it's taxing off dirt runways or whatever. I think it looks pretty decent. Now I gotta tell you, I didn't do a whole lot of scratch building on this. I did add a few things here and there. I added some railing on the inside of the cockpit. I added some really quick makeshift seat belts. I added some seat cushions. I did add some piping on the inside of the engines, but that's about it. Everything else is right out of the box. And this is one of those shake and bake kits. It really is. To me, it did a fantastic job with engineering this aircraft because it just almost literally fell together. So if you guys haven't built the Bowfighter and you're interested in building one, give it a shot. It's an older kit, but it's nice, fine, recessed panel lines. The fit is perfect. I didn't have any trouble with it whatsoever. But that does it for us, guys. We are finished with the Twin Brit. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Tim over there at British Aviation and Scale. Also, a big thank you to each and every one of you who followed me along on this journey. This has been an amazing build. I've learned so much, and I've been able to practice a lot of the skills that I've been trying to increase and learn a little bit more thoroughly. So thank you so much for watching, guys. We're going to go back. We're going to focus most of our attention back on the Harrier. We still have the 50th anniversary Harrier group build to complete, which is due in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to get back on that. As always, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next time on Ben Builds. Stay strong, keep building, have some fun, and we'll see you back here next time on Ben Builds. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you soon.